Hello everyone, my name is John Stayskull from Lost Relic Games. So today we're going to follow on from the last tutorial where we looked at enemy aggro AI systems and evolve on that using a raycast system allowing our enemy to shoot a ray out of its eyes and try to locate the player. This allows us to create obstructions and put crates in between the player and the enemy. As always, I'd like to thank these guys up here. You guys are bloody fantastic. Much love. Let's get straight into this tutorial. So this is what we created in the last um, tutorial. And you can see here, this is really cool. It's a really nice foundation um, for um, enemy aggro. And you can see when we walk out of the aggro range, which is kind of like here, the um, enemy stops tracking us. The problem this proposes though, if we put a crate or an object between the enemy and the player, we would expect the enemy to um, no longer be able to see the player, right? But you see here, when I still walk into the aggro range, the enemy still wakes up and tries to chase us. So we want to change that and rather than creating a um, distance check, which is what we're currently doing in this tutorial from the last one, we want to rather create a line of sight where a ray cast shoots out of the enemy's eyes and looks for the player. And if it hits something like a crate, then it can't see the player. So let's give you guys a quick tour of what is actually going on in the scene here. So up here you can see I've just got a ground, a player which has a um, play controller. So if you guys want to make a play controller, this is the same one I created in that Mega Man play controller um, 2D. So you guys can jump over there. I'm, I won't get into the specifics of how I created a play controller in this video because that could easily take more than half an hour. <laughs> and the enemy object has a um, box collider and also a rigid body component and also an enemy script. And this enemy script we can entirely created from scratch in the last video. So I'll just open that up for you guys. Um, it's, it's a rather short script, but if you guys want to um, see how we made this in its entirety, you can jump over to my previous video and I walk through it all there. But I'll give you guys a quick tour. Um, so I've got the player, the aggro range, the move speed serialized that I um, then assign over here in the inspector for the enemy. And in the start function, I just assign the rigid body component. The face animator is what I'm using to um, just change the uh, facial expressions of the enemy, those kind of angry eyes. So this is where the tracking code is going on. So you can see here I've got a distance to player variable, a float, which is um, using the vector two dot distance, which returns a distance between two objects. So here I'm passing in the enemy's transform position and then the player's position, and it gives us back a value. And then I'm doing a simple check to see if the value um, is less than the aggro range, then chase the player, otherwise stop chasing the player. And in the chase player function, then I'm just doing a simple check to determine which side of the um, enemy we're on. If we're on the left side of the enemy, um, sorry, which side of the player we are on. So if the enemy is on the left side of the player, then move right. And if we are on the right side of the player, then we want to move left. And here I'm assigning a negative move speed to keep us moving left. And then we've got to stop chasing a player uh, which simply changes the velocity to zero and closes the enemy's eyes. All right, so how to, how to expand on this to add line of sight? So we need a, a new function. So here we're going to create a uh, void can see player and um, we'll have some parameters for this. So we'll say float distance and this will be the distance of the aggro range or the um, how far the enemy can see. So this uh, function is actually going to return a value. So I'll change this void to bool. And you can see it's gone red because it um, now we've told it that it needs to return a value. Bool, um, just a temporary um, val, which I equals false. Anytime I create a function that returns a value, I just create a temporary um, 
uh, local variable inside the function called val. It's a nice way to do it. And then we will have a variable called cast dist equals distance. So this will make sense in just a moment. Um, for the moment, we're just kind of blocking it in. And in case you didn't know, um, you might be wondering why did I use var and what the hell is a var, right? Uh, variables, var is a variable and you're allowed to use this inside function specifically. You cannot use variables up here. You need to um, specify the data type. But within functions, you can use the word variable and um, have different types of data types assigned to that. Or you can also use float. Up to you. But sometimes I just use there. there. It's a bit quicker. Um, it saves you working out what data type you need. So we'll create a ray cast hit 2D. So if you're not familiar with this, this is a type that is used for shooting the rays and it leverages the physics line cast which you might be more familiar with, and I've used that in previous tutorials. So physics 2D dot line cast. Then you can see we've got a start point and an end point. So for the start point, we need somewhere to shoot from. Um, I'll make it the current enemy's position, but the problem is if the pivot point is at the feet, then we're gonna be shooting from the feet and we wanna kind of shoot from the eyes uh, so for the second value, we need an end position, right? Okay, so we need to set up a quick end position before we do that. So vector2, um, end pos equals Right, uh, yeah, we're gonna have some issues here. So I'm just gonna quickly turn this function off and I need to create that start point. Um, so we'll go to our enemy and we'll just open that up and we'll right click and select create empty. This will create an empty object inside the enemy. So we'll call this one cast point or cast pos or something like that. And we can assign it a gizmo so we can see it, make it a green one. And we just want to kind of position this somewhere at the eye level so we can shoot out from the eye position. Jump back to here and we'll just need to make a um, serialized field to hold that cast position. So I'll call it, yeah, we'll keep it a transform and we'll call it cast point. And we'll quickly jump back to Unity again and we'll just assign that cast point. So we'll click on our enemy and we should now have this um, cast point property revealed. So we'll just drag that in. All right. So we should be back on track now. So I'll just take those comments away. And now I'll just quickly turn that off. But now we can say cast for the end position, we can say cast point dot position plus vector three dot right multiplied by the distance. So this here is kind of like a shorthand for, I mean, it's the equivalent of us saying new vector three or two and um, position dot x plus distance kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a couple of ways to write it, but this is kind of like a nice clean way to do it. And that way, if we change the cast dis distance to being a negative, even though it's shooting right, it will um, go left, if that makes sense to you guys. Because in mathematics, um, a positive plus a negative um, equals a negative. <laughs> and a negative plus a negative is a positive kind of thing. Um, so, you know, you might be familiar with that kind of concept. So uncomment this ray cast hit. And now, instead of um, starting the line cast at um, the enemy's transform, we can use this... Oops. I've just jumped up. So we can use this cast point. Um, so the end position, now of course we pass in the end position. The last value here, as you might be familiar with in all um, line casting, you need to add in a layer mask. So don't pay too much attention into 
how this is written because it's a bit verbose in that it's a bit complicated and long, but it's kind of like a Unity convention. We want to get the name of the layer that we're looking for. And in this case, I'm going to use action. So I've got an error here. Cannot convert. Oh, of course, I need to put in position. So just to explain this line more clearly, we're doing a line cast. We're adding the start position of the line cast, the end position, and what it is looking for. This ray cast hit is looking to make contact with anything on a layer called action. So I'll say if hit dot collider is not equal to null, first of all, we just wanted to check if it's actually hitting something. So the moment hit dot collider is not null, it means this ray cast hit has found something on the action layer. And then we want to check to see if what it's found is actually the player. Then we'll say within here we'll say if hit dot collider dot game object dot compare tag, and here we'll type in the tag of player, which is the common tag you will um, have assigned to your player most likely. And the cool thing here, which this might give you some ideas of how this can be used. So you can have a lot of different objects on the action layer. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, actually we'll do it now. Let's we'll jump over to, um, back into Unity and we wanna click on the player and you can see here on the, in the layers dropdown We've got a bunch of different kind of basic layers. So we'll add a new layer and we'll call this one action. And we can also do the same for the crate. We can click the crate in the um, project file and well, it was currently assigned to ground, but we can make that also an action layer. So anything on the, when, when I say action, what do I mean by action? So anything that is in the play space, anything that the player can or the enemy can interact with um, action or action layer is this a nice way to group different objects verbally because otherwise what do you call them right foreground midground you can call it like a play space or whatever but my convention is action so if the object that the raycast has found has the tag of player let's aggro the enemy and here we can now leverage this um, chase player function that we set up before. So we'll chase player. If we have not found a player, then stop chasing player. Ah, I see what I've done here. So I've been a bit silly. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. So here, value equals true value equals false. I hope you don't mind me going back and forth with a bit of kind of ideas. I think this is kind of a good way to learn as well as you get to see my own kind of thought process and how things change as I write it. Um, and here we just want to return the value. So every time we fire this function, it will give us back this value. And I'm changing this value depending on if um, it sees the player or not. So how do we now use this? So first of all, we can remove this distance check from the previous tutorial. We don't need that. You can keep that um, as a record for a different type of game or whatever you want to use. It's nice to have different options. And that distance check is certainly applicable for some context. So here we'll say, if can see player, and we need to type in the distance. So we'll say aggro uh, range. If, if can see player is true, here we want to aggro enemy. So we'll say um, chase player. Else, if the enemy cannot see the um, player, then stop chasing player. That makes a bit more sense. So the reason we did this, you can probably write all this logic in here, inside the update. But just to make it a bit cleaner, I've separated into this utility function. Um, so we don't have to touch that again and we can do all our checks in here. And you can just see, it's just a, having this uh, simple 
if hierarchy here makes it just a bit easier to work with and having to have to sort through is this every time. You kind of want to create these utility functions and put them at the bottom of your code somewhere and try not to worry about them too much and be able to kind of have a nice clear working space within your update loop, hiding a lot of that complexity. So let's actually see what will happen now. I'm very curious to see if this will run. <laughs> As you guys probably know, first time you run things and often has problems. So it's not doing anything, right? Oh, okay. First of all, a couple of things. The enemy is facing away from us. So this ray is shooting this way. So we're behind the enemy. Um, one thing that we'll have to track though is the facing direction of the enemy. And what we're also gonna do, I wanna be able to see this ray cast. So I'm gonna create some code to actually fire a visible line. So let's do that now. So to do that, we'll go back into this function here. So we'll say debug dot draw line. And we'll say the cast point dot position end position. And we'll give it a color. So we'll say color dot blue. So all this is gonna do is it's gonna uh, mimic what we're doing with the line cast and just draw a line in the editor so we can see um, the line off site. Well, right, while I'm here, I'm just gonna create a, I'll just create a bool here called um, is facing left. And by default, it'll be false because the enemy graphic is facing right. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna, um, over here in the chase, where we turn the um, enemy around based on the, its proximity to the um, orientation to the player rather, we're just gonna change this property as well. So here we will say false. So the enemy is to the left of the player, we need to move right. And then we also wanna change is facing left to false because it's gonna be facing right. And here we'll say is facing left equals true. Um, Hope it makes, that makes sense to you guys. You might have something similar in your own games, but if not, then just copy what I have here. <laughs> All right, and what we're gonna do with this, we're gonna use this, right? So here we can see our cast distance is shooting right. The problem with ray casting, well not the problem, the challenge, is um, unlike child clips within um, objects, when you rotate or flip the objects, like the facing direction, the ray cast will still continue to shoot, um, in this case, right. So when the enemy turns left, I want the ray cast to also shoot left. So the best way to do that is say is if is facing left is true, which is the same as um, writing true, um, one, one tip for beginners, it's not a bad way to write it, sometimes a bit of a long, longer way, just to familiarize yourself with uh, kind of programming, and then you can just write it like that. Um, same goes for using that, which means false. Doing it like that is exactly the same as writing that, um, and sometimes writing it this long way is um, just makes it a bit easier to understand when you're learning. So anyway, if is facing a left is true, then um, cast distance equals minus distance. So by default, it will be a positive number. And if we are facing left, we just wanna switch that to a negative number. Ah, I see here, we, got, we made a mistake. So I should be using the cast distance here. So just update your code from distance to cast distance. And that will change from a positive to a negative number depending on um, what this is. So now, okay, so we're drawing a cast, a line. Let's actually just see if that's gonna, if that's working. So let's move the enemy over here a little bit. And we have nothing. So what is going on with that? Right, okay. 
So I'm only here, I've, I've I made it so it's only going to draw a line if it's actually hitting something, which is not right at all. So I'll just put it else here. So if it's hitting something, then do that. If it's not, draw a blue line here. And what I might actually do, um, I'll make another line so that if the ray cast does encounter an object, let's um, draw another line that actually finishes on that object. So we'll say hit dot um, point, which is the convention for ray casting. And it will change the color to a yellow. All right, so I'm just going to rearrange the scene ever so slightly. So I'm just going to move the enemy over there since he's already facing right. And I'll move the player over here. And let's see what happens when I press play. All right, so we now have this blue line cast. So if we enter this space, it goes yellow. You see that? So if I jump out of the range, you can no longer see me. Run, 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 run. Oh, get away, he's moving way too fast. I'm going to slow down this enemy's movement speed because he's moving way too fast. So I might just make that a two. And you can see here, if I adjust this aggro range, I could do it in real time to find a nice suitable um, distance that works for our game. So you can see here, we walk in and we walk out. It's really cool. So now let's see what happens with the crate, which was the initial kind of thing we were trying to solve. So because the crate is also um, on the action layer, we can stop the ray cast with the crate. So now if the player walks in to this area, the enemy can no longer see the player. But what's going to happen if I move this out of the way? Bing! See? It's really cool. So that solves the problem we had of um, the ray cast for the player. I mean, we have, we've created a few new issues here in that um, the moment the player, sorry, the moment the enemy can no longer see the player, the ray cast stops working, as in the aggro stops working. So what, what you can do there is a few different things. Um, you, you essentially want to have some kind of an aggro timer, right? So if the enemy can no longer see the player, you want to keep looking for the player for a period of time. Um, so I might try to hack something like that in, guys. I wasn't planning for this specifically, but um, let's see how this turns out. So if if the can see play, if can't see player. So first of all, a couple of things we're going to, we're going to do. We're going to add a. Let's make sure we haven't already got it. We want to create a boolean called is aggro equals true. And I'm just going to declare it in the top of this um, of this class here. So is aggro and by default it is false. We can write it like that. Um, so is aggro true chase player. And here below it, I'm just going to say if aggro is true, so if it was true, and now we can no longer see the player, then instead of stopping straight away, let's give it a bit of a delay. Let's say um, invoke stop chasing player, so that the name that we want to use, and we'll just say like, um, I don't know, like three seconds or something. One, two, three. And this, this is not the most efficient way to necessarily write this. There's a lot of different ways to delay function calls. You can use a coroutine. You can use some kind of like um, delayed call from a tweening engine. Oh, and we need to flag this back. Oh, actually, we'll go to stop chasing player. Find that function. And in here, we'll just reset the is aggro to false. So now we've officially stopped chasing the player. Aggro needs to be false. So if this all works, and I hope it does. 
then um, the enemy will continue chasing the player for three seconds. And only if after three seconds he can't find the player, then um, he will go back to sleep. So he's still chasing us. Look, cool. He knows we're here. He knows we're around. So we may need to play with that a little bit just to get that right. I'm going to create one more property here because it's, it's this is getting a little bit more complicated than I thought. So I'm going to create an is searching just to um, keep track of this little window in between um, losing track of the player and actually stopping chasing. So I'll say is searching is true. Because why I'm doing this is because I don't want um, I don't want the enemy to continuously fire off this function. And that's what's causing this problem. So I want to say if oops if is searching equals false, then is searching equals true. And only then do we want to invoke this? Because what was happening is I think it was con continuously calling this function and causing some issues. And then in the um, stop chasing function, we'll also say is searching equals false. So it stopped searching, it stopped aggroing, blah, blah. One, two, three. Four, five, and he stops. He can't find us, and he stops after five seconds. Um, however, for whatever reason, he's not turning around, which is probably something very simple here. Probably in this chase player function. Uh, can see if can see player check right. Okay. So he, he's set to only chase the player if he can see the player. That's wrong. Because we've now added this is aggro, below all this stuff, we'll create another if to say if is aggro, then chase player. So I've got a good feeling about this now, guys. So if we walk into his range, he'll follow us. And if we walk out for long enough, ah, he's still got us. So he's tracking us all around now. And if I stand on his head for long enough, he should stop moving. You see that? Because he lost sight of us for um, more than five seconds and he's gone back to sleep. But now if I wake him up again, look, he's going to track our direction. That's really cool. And if we stay out of the range for long enough, ah, good. So that's working very well. I mean, obviously, these things are far from perfect and need to be tweaked and revised a little bit. Um, but I think it illustrates the power of the Raycast. I use the same kind of approach in my own projects. You can see here in my game, Blood and Mead, <laughs> The enemies are shooting the ray out of the eyes, just like we are doing in this tutorial. Oh, and Blood and Meat is currently available to wishlist on Steam, so if you want to see how this game project turns out, do consider giving it a wishlist. I'll put a link down below. So I'm just going to quickly go back here and um, do a very quick recap for you guys um, who are beginning and want to get a bit of update. And also, if you're kind of copying on from screen, you get an idea of what's going on here. Um, so from the top, I've got a bunch of variables here. The player, the aggro range, uh, the move speed of the enemy, and we have an is facing left, which we're changing. And um, more importantly, in the update function here, we are checking if we can see the player passing in the aggro range, um, setting it to true if it can see the player. If it can't see the player no longer, then, um, and it is aggro, and um, it's not currently searching, then search for the player and after five seconds stop chasing the player. So this is a kind of like mini mini AI kind of you know mechanism that 
as I mentioned, will need it. We need needs a little bit of work, but it's a good good starting point for you guys if you want to tinker around. And then we have this um, can see player, which has the bulk of the um, code we want. Passing in the distance, changing the distance um, to a negative or positive, depending on if we're facing left or not. Uh, defining an endpoint based on the um, cast point start direction. Um, using this shorthand annotation um, of vector right multiplied by the cast distance to create a, um, uh, the end position. Then we're passing in both the start position and the end position using a mask filter to look for the action layer and then um, using the raycast hit or collider check we are looking for the player. If it finds the player, um, mark the value as true. If not, mark it as false. Draw some debug lines, depending on if we can see the player or not, and then return the um, outcome of this entire function back to um, this check here. So we are using it like that. I hope this video has been useful. Um, as always, Patreon supporters will get full access to this entire project, all the source code, all the assets. And thank you guys who are supporting me on Patreon. You guys are really, really um, helping me to stay motivated and to keep this content coming. So thanks very much. If any of you want to be Patreon supporters, I'll put a link down below. Not only will you get the code for this project, but you will get the code and um, project files for all the different tutorials as well as a bunch of cool Patreon exclusive stuff that will be coming up very soon. So please do like the video if you found it useful and don't forget to subscribe if you are new here and you're not yet a subscriber. Alright guys, see you in the next video. Bye.